Right. Today I've got a slightly different project for you. You must be laughing at this pot. This is a concrete pot made from a jelly mold. And this pot is probably older than most of you viewers. I made this pot the year I got married, in 1966. And I made this from a jelly mold because I couldn't afford any pots at the time. I started doing pottery in 1967. But in 1966, when I was uh, first married, I could only grow things in containers because my home was a two-bedroom uh, flat with a huge balcony. So everything I made had to be in pots. So this is the concrete pot made from a jelly mold. So this reminds me of the days when I had no money, nothing, and all I could afford was concrete pots. So I'm going to show you how we're going to make concrete pots. So look here, I've got the concrete mixer going because we are laying some paving. This is our new packing shed and you can see the amount of work that is going on. There's a lot of paving going on and a lot of concrete being mixed. And while there is concrete being mixed, last night the guys threw away two barrel loads of concrete uh, cement and I hadn't realized what was going on. So there you are. That is the stuff. And before I start touching it, I'm going to wear my gloves because I don't want to my, get my hands sore and coarse touching cement because it's nasty stuff. So let's put my gloves on. So, the way I make my pot, I use little containers. All these little containers, you will soon recognize, are food containers. Look at that. Made in Thailand. This is a pot noodle that I purchased and I'm going to make a concrete pot out of that. So what I do, you can either put the concrete straight in there and then hit it out. But I prefer to put a little bit of plastic in there because with the plastic you can get the concrete out very quickly. So that's all you do. So these are all going to be what we call primitive pots because when they come out you will like the shape of them. They're going to be absolutely primitive and wild looking. So and then when it's semi hard I'll take some of the the concrete out, the cement out and then we can drill a hole in it. If you like, you can put another piece of plastic. Let's put it on here. So you put another bag in there and then you can shape, shape it like a pot like that. And then we're going to just let it cure. So, this is another plastic container for the takeaway foods. So again, we are going to put a bag in there so that it doesn't get stuck in the food container. How simple is that? How simple is that? And then we take another little bag. Put that in and then I'm going to use another container to squash the concrete out. So I'm going to put that in and I'm going to squash the cement off and just leave it natural like that. And then tomorrow when it's set we will take it out. So we're going to leave this around. That's a lovely shape, a round bowl. Again, you will understand why I put the plastic, because the plastic gives it a very nice texture.
I've used some semi-hard concrete as well, partly dry. Okay, we'll leave that to dry. Very nice, natural, organic shape. Another one, number three, and then you all recognize what this is. This is a dog bowl. I don't keep dogs anymore. I used to have three Doberman dogs and two large German Shepherds, and this is their dinner bowl or water bowl. So as I don't keep dogs anymore, let me use the dog bowl to make a nice concrete pot. So, I will get some cement out, straight from the cement mixer. It's almost like a porridge, wet cement. I think I prefer it a little drier, but wet is fine too. Look at that. What a way to make bonsai pots. And then we put a bag in there. Bag within a bag. And you will understand why I put a bag when I come to release the mold. So we have to wait one or two days before we take it out. So there you are, I've made four pots. And I can even use another, this is another dish. This is another plastic uh, takeaway food dish. Let me put a little bit in there. Don't waste anything. There you go. So we'll wait another day before we undo the molds. So six days after setting these pots in their molds, let me show you the results of my work making concrete pots. So many of these are still in the plastic mold and you see the plastic bag that I put. The plastic bag gives the cement an interesting texture and also by using the plastic bag it prevents the cement sticking to the mold so I can use that again you see if I didn't use a plastic bag it would be stuck to the plastic pot so as I pull it out you see where the plastic stays there it gives a very interesting surface texture and this, in fact, is how I used to make my ceramic pots as well. This same technique, I'm giving a lot of secrets away. And the uneven top is like that. And of course, once it is painted, it will look very nice. I haven't put any reinforcing, but you can put reinforcing, a little bit of chicken wire if you want. Okay, so that's that one. Let's look at another one. This one, I didn't use the plastic bag. So let's see what's happened. It won't be as easy to take out, but I think I can still take it out. So if you don't use a plastic bag, you don't get that interesting texture. You see, it's just plain, whereas if you use a plastic bag, you get that in instant line effect. So that is one without using the plastic bag. And now we come to the famous dog bowl. This is my dog bowl. And you see how easy it comes out? So,
I hope you can see why I've used the plastic. Look at that lovely texture there. And this was an inside mold to give the impression of the inside. So this is the texture we have on the outside of this pot. And then there was another little round one. This was done inside a small plastic pot again. So there you are, just pull it out. And here presto. This is exactly how I used to make my ceramic pots, as I said. Look at the beautiful texture there. So this would be an interesting pot for accent plantings. And this one, I've already taken it out of the plastic bowl. And this also... So there's the texture on that one, crinkly top, and of course what else do we have to do? All we now have to do is to drill some holes because you want drainage. Although being concrete, probably we don't need that much drainage because the water will drain on its own. If you wanted to make big drainage holes, you could put a bamboo stick to form the hole when you're casting the cement. But because it's cement, it's quite easy to drill after you've made it. There you are. So you can drill several holes. I'm not going to show me drilling all these. So I would drill maybe about two holes and that would be enough drainage. So you could either paint this or if you don't paint it, as it gets watered, the wet and the damp will cause moss to grow on it and it will have a lovely, lovely color which is very natural. In fact, I am now going to soak it in the water overnight. I'm going to get a bucket, soak it in the water to take a lot of lime out. I'll plant it with an accent planting and show you what it looks like tomorrow. So the video is not complete yet. Okay, so all the rest we will also drill holes and this is how you can make simple concrete or cement pots. There you go. Another way of saving you money and of course it doesn't do me any good because I'm not going to sell my pots. But that's not the point. I'm here to teach you. I'm going to now show you how I go about doing what we call an accent planting. 
I used to do a lot of these when I used to show at the Chelsea Flower Show because I always used to display my big bonsais with some very nice accent plants. So it brings back a lot of happy memories. So, although I haven't let this pot mature, I haven't painted it, but let's see what we can do with it. When we make these things, it's almost like doing an instant Japanese flower arrangement. It is just like that. And look at this. This is a root cutting of a crab apple that I discovered. Can you see the root? This is the root. And it has actually rooted and it's flowered. So how nice is that? You saw when you prune your crab apples, just from the root you can get some very nice things growing. So I'm just doing ad lib. I'm creating as I go along, nothing special. Just creating as I go along. And this is a little Libertia, for those of you who don't know this plant. This is called Formosan Lily, and the botanical name is Libertia grandiflora. It's got white lily-like flowers, very small flowers, and very pretty, look at that. So I'm just gonna put things in there. As I say, I'm creating on the hoof as I go along. You can have them any size, big or small. I haven't put any fern yet. I hadn't realized that the pot is not that big after all. I can't cram in a million things. Ferns are always very useful. I usually plant little ones in and they propagate and multiply. Now how many minutes have I spent on this? Barely a couple of minutes and already it looks nice. Look at it. Lovely. Instant. These of course are seasonal plants so when the water buttercup has finished I will replace it with something else and when the crab apple flowers are finished I can yank it out and put something else. So it's always like a seasonal arrangement. So there you are, my cement pot I've used to make this. So how nice is that? Beautiful. So cement pot, humble pot, you don't have to spend a lot of money. If I had more time, I would dress it up with moss, fill it up, and there you are. And there are more of these plants. This, in case you didn't know what they are, it is a water buttercup. You look at the roots that grows in my pond. They grow in the pond and I use every scrap from the pond to make these lovely arrangements. So I hope you've enjoyed this little episode of using cement pots to make accent planting pots or bonsai pots. So there you go.